<laughs> the end of October, usually the greatest weather of the year. There's no better time to set up a hunting camp. For many years, we've had a bow hunting camp for deer in the Houghton Lake area. Mike Ignatz, the director of the Houghton Lake Chamber of Commerce, and he's been the cook at every Houghton Lake bow camp since 1982. This past October, Stan Halati and Tom Eilers from Montague joined our camp. They won this trip at a drawing at one of our hunting awards banquets. Now, I planned to be there too, but I broke my leg a week earlier and Kathy Beitler became the hunt master. Here we are at Bow Camp 91, back up at Houghton Lake on uh, state land. Gee, Fred, you really should be here. There's a lot of deer. We've seen more deer already than we've seen in the last couple bow camps. And we've got a couple blinds set up that Mike Ignat set up for us. We've got a tree stand set up and a ground blind. And the tree stand was good, but uh, Bob, you said a net last night, and then you're moving. Why are you moving? Well, the, the stand is 10 yards from the bait, which is fine. But the deer know where the, the, the stand is. So the deer are coming from along the, the swamp here. So I've moved down into a tree down there about 25 feet in the air. They won't even know I'm up there when they walk by. You're going to ambush them before they get to me, is that it? No, I'm just going to watch them. <laughs> uh-huh. John, look, we've got a fresh scrape. I, uh, I didn't see this last night. Oh, this is excellent. Yep, I just, uh, just noticed it now, so, yeah. And there was more carrots around here last night than there is now. They've been chomping on them, and they like those sugar beets, but I think they eat the carrots a lot faster. I've got just an ideal blind. You're going to love it. <laughs> Kathy marked her blind with blaze orange ribbons for safety and to find it in the dark. They didn't bother the deer. I got it squeezed through the pines, but that's no biggie. You got a bucket to sit on. Yep, just sit right down here and, and I'm all set. And see right out to the bait pile. Last night when I was sitting here, I, uh, a deer came up and came right straight on and looked right straight into the blind, but I was up a little bit further. I'm back about five feet more now than I was last night. Kathy liked this blind, not only because it was along a swamp where there was lots of deer sign, but because it was warm. When you're on the ground nestled in the pines, wind is going to be minimal. Now that helps if your scent would be blowing towards the deer, and it really helps when it rains, the temperature drops below freezing, and the trees become pelted with snowflakes. Kathy's husband, Bob, is used to enduring more harsh conditions, and he likes an aerial view, so he almost always hunts from a tree stand, and he likes them high. He's up about 25 feet. The wind and the rain, well, he just endures it as he waits for the buck to emerge from the swamp. The rain shut down John Ford's camera gear, and it wouldn't work until it dried out back at camp. Oh, I heard you got one there, Bob. What happened? Oh, I had one walk in just at dark. Uh, shot it, run off into the swamp, probably 50 yards. I, I'm sure I heard it go down. Uh, and because of the rain and stuff, I'm not going to go out and look for it till morning. Yeah, but the tracker, we found the tracker and, and followed that as far as we could. Yeah, the game tracker worked maybe all the way to the deer. We'll find out in the morning. But enough to know where he went and what direction he went in and everything else. And Bob Beitler never sounds excited, but he does get cranked up over deer hunting. Yeah, we'll Were you excited? I mean, come on, you're just there. <laughs> yeah, he was. When um, I heard the arrow go off, and then he whistled, and I thought, oh, boy. <laughs> well, I have to shoot a deer, so somebody in this camp has to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Now, you guys, the pressure's on. What would you see tonight? Mm, me? I didn't see it's nothing five. tonight. Five. five. Yeah. All right, Tom. Well, I scared them mostly when I was walking up to the to the stands. And they ran off the bait piles. So you didn't get any shots, right then, huh? and, yeah. You didn't no, get any shots? Not this afternoon. <laughs> Got one this morning. Well, we don't no. want to talk about those kind of things. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, oh yeah. is that right? Now you now's your time. Uh, no. <laughs> we have know. a hat shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Hey, judge the distance a little wrong. You're I, walking uh, your blind. I shot a twenty <laughs> yarder with my thirty yard pin and uh Shot over it. <laughs> that'll yep. do it. Yeah, that'll do John, it. they're blaming you for this. I keep hearing them say uh, what John said and John saw. Uh, I don't think that's right. <laughs> no, I'm not controlling. I think you get to shoot the first arrow tomorrow at some hats. You know, I figure Fred's not here. Somebody's got to screw up everything. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I would have loved to be with this crew at Bo Camp, but I hadn't yet recovered from screwing up a hockey game. And this weather was nothing I could handle with my newly broken leg. John Ford taped Bob Beitler's deer earlier this morning. We're going to show it to you in a minute. But this was the situation on the third day of bow camp. Tom Eilers was nestled at the base of a white pine tree where keeping warm was a major project. He had a good view of a deer crossing area. His mask was partly for camouflage and partly to keep warm. His sugar beets and corn drew a crowd of squirrels and birds throughout the day. That's something to look at and an entertaining part of baiting. On an overhead limb, the feather game vane showed the direction the wind was blowing. It was right. With John Ford at Tom's side, a doe came in to grab a bite to eat. Now, some hunters don't use bait, and some hunters use truckloads of bait. Most hunters who use bait just put out small amounts each day. They find that 90% of it, at least, is eaten by deer at night. And the deer that feed at bait piles usually aren't big bucks. In fact, they usually aren't bucks. They're does and fawns that hunters pass up in favor of something larger. That's what was happening here. Tom wanted a buck or a bigger doe, but after weeks of bow hunting, three days in the woods at this bow camp, Tom watched this deer for 10 minutes, the whole time it was facing away. That's not the way you want to shoot at a deer with an arrow for a good, clean kill, so Tom waited and contemplated. John turned the camera off, 10 minutes passed, the deer had enough to eat and turned to walk away, maybe head for the acorns at the oak woods. When it turned, Tom began drawing his arrow and John Ford flipped the camera on. Well, something had changed. The wind had died down and the deer heard the noise. You know, everybody thinks that videotaping deer should be easy, and it is if the conditions are right, but more often than not, nature is working against a cameraman. The next deer that came in, Tom took, but John didn't want to scare it away by videotaping. Hey, congratulations. Oh, are you kidding me? Thank you. Was that exciting? Or oh, what? that was outstanding, man. It was just great. I couldn't believe that. I mean, you couldn't get that, you couldn't draw on him because he was looking right at us there at first. Yep, and, and, and there was just barely enough light that uh, I could just barely see the pin and get it lined up with the string. And, uh, and then there was no wait, and he had I to go for it. I didn't dare grab the camera because I didn't want to spook him for you, but... Yeah, you know, it was... You made a good shot. It sounded great. <sighs> Talk about excitement, huh, John? Yeah. Was that something? That was something. Let's go find him. Oh, yeah, let's do it, huh? In these conditions, Tom Eilers was thrilled to get a deer, and in the dark, they found it about 50 yards away. But stealing the show was Bob Beitler, who found his buck early that morning. Well, this is a stand we put up that we talked about up here. And if you see the tracker coming down. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. standing right here. Okay. Just on the edge of this clearing then? Yeah. All right. Let's go. tracker cap right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Thank goodness we had it. Uh, well, we should be able to follow this then. The tracker cap and stuff is there because I left the tracker hanging there. In the stand. Yeah. yeah. So in case the deer moved, the, the string would still be moving out. Okay. Oh, it's going to be a little bit harder to find in the snow. For that heavy rain last night, there's no way we could yeah, the any blood. Yeah, the blood trail was gone last night even. Yeah, that's one thing the tracker done was show us where he turned. Okay, we still got, here? yeah, we still got tracker. Oh, here's part of the arrow. Looks like a arrow broke off. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Well, shoot. So it went halfway through and then broke. So right. it hit something hard. So we'll leave this here. Okay. Just so uh, we know where we last was. Now what did he do? Did you hear him down in here then? Heard him in the water. In the water, all right. So we made a turn here and it's real wet ahead of us and there's kind of a game trail. So we'll just follow that and hopefully find some signs. All right. Good luck. All right. Bob and Kathy Beitler forged through the swamp following the game trail, the logical path the deer would take. About 75 yards ahead was Bob's buck, which turned out to be the biggest buck ever taken at any of our Houghton Lake bow camps. All right. Congratulations, Bob. <laughs> oh. Excellent. Well, I think it's uh, just a little bit bigger than that spike that you thought you had last night. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's so heavy now. Well, sometimes you luck out. 
Yeah, that's, I guess. That's great. The six point. Yep, you got three on each side here. This one was, yeah, I guess it'd count. Well, I guess we'll let you have it. <laughs> Our bow camps have always been on state land, and because of the hunting pressure, deer are more wary later in the season. But Bob set a new stand up in a new location, which made the difference. The first Houghton Lake bow camp I attended was in 1982. Over 20 hunters in three tents took three deer. In 1985, we began smaller annual bow hunts in the same basic area. The first year of our Michigan outdoors tradition, we had six hunters. Our bunks were in the pumpkin tent, which we used for several years after that. I tell you, that year was really fun. Dave Borgeson joined us, along with Linda Judson, Mike Ignat, of course, Phil Grable, Kathy Beitler, Bob Garner, and Bob Brockwell. Man, we had a riot at this bow camp. I got the only deer the last morning after the camera crew went home. In the years that followed, the fun continued, but we didn't take any deer. One year, Kathy Beitler's dad joined us, and I challenged him to pit his compound bow against my long bow. What do you think of that? What do you think of that, Gleason? <laughs> our aim was good, but our hunting luck wasn't. But in 1991, thanks to the hospitality of Mike Ignat and the Houghton Lake Chamber of Commerce, Jerry Burgess, Burnside RV that supplied a trailer for sleeping, Mike Ignat Jr., who scouted a good location, and Bob Beitler, of course, for getting the big buck of almost a decade at Houghton Lake Bow Camps. Mike Ignat's granddaughter, Janelle, probably thinks we do this every year. <laughs> 